Specific learning disabilities take many forms, and one child can be very different from another. Jan is soft-spoken, conscientious, a model of good behavior. Her reading and writing are good. But a language disability makes it difficult to remember even simple directions. Jan, would you do me a favor and go to the cupboard and bring three sheets of paper, some scissors, and some paste? Okay. Now, what did I ask you to bring? Um, paste. What other things did I ask you? Can you remember? This boy also is pleasant, unobtrusive and meticulous in his work. But he often gets stuck on a single idea, preoccupied with a word or phrase, and his disability might be overlooked. It is sometimes only in a chance activity like this that his tendency to perseverate becomes obvious. The next word is through. Go through the door. If children with mild disabilities are too Number often three. overlooked, Does. the children with severe Does handicaps are too often school. excluded. Of course, the hyperactive, Try distractible it. child has seldom Try been ignored. If his behavior was intolerable, he may have been excluded from one school after another. David, are you with us? This February. jitteriness the constant motion is what neurologists call hyperkinetic behavior. For these children, right just me. sitting still is an ordeal. All right, David. Keep your eyes on your own paper. David has more than one difficulty. His auditory perception Remember. seems to magnify every Whenever sound. It is as if he hears things too well. He cannot shut out background noises and concentrate Keith, on the teacher's voice. Keep all your papers together neatly. The study of specific learning disabilities has led to discoveries about all learning. We are beginning to appreciate the complexity of acts that we have so long taken for granted. The coordination of hand and eye. The judgment of space. The sense of balance. Rhythm. We have learned that what for one child may seem instinctive and spontaneous, for another is a conscious effort a problem he must overcome. Now stand on one foot and lean forward. Lean forward as far as you can. Sometimes a problem that goes undetected in the classroom becomes dramatically apparent on the playground or in the gym. Now shut your eyes and try to hold your balance. Touch the tip of your nose with your finger. That's good. Neurological dysfunctions can affect balance and coordination. Left and right confusions are frequent learning handicaps. There is no universal symptom of impairment. Every child must be understood as an individual. 
but some things hold true in general. All children, whether their disabilities are mild or severe, are easier to help if they are found early. And almost inevitably, children who have suffered years of failure in school develop emotional problems that further complicate the learning process. Fortunately, many teachers are learning to watch for the children with special problems. A teacher may ask children to look at designs like these and reproduce them on their own papers. With some children, the perceptual difficulty is immediately apparent. A neurological dysfunction may confuse a child's sense of position and direction, and words that describe position, inside, outside, upper, lower, have little meaning for this child. Now at the right of the square, will you draw two circles? Now in the upper right-hand corner of the square, will you draw a triangle? From the triangle, will you draw a line to the lower left-hand corner of the square? Write the letter D. Writing letters and words in reverse is a fairly common problem. Now, under that, write the word dog. Make your letters nice and big. All right. A race to get the clothespins on the line can show up problems in muscle control. Unusual awkwardness and mirror movements of the free hand show immature development. Teachers can watch for dysrhythmia in the way a child skips or jumps rope. They may check him further with an exercise like this one. A teacher who suspects a language disability may ask a child to retell a joke or repeat a list of words. Ducks, sheep, pigeons, chickens. Robbie, can you say that? Ducks, sheep, pi bit, pigeons, and pigs. This time I'm going to ask Susie a list. Carpenters, painters, millers, Soldiers. Carpenters, painters, soldiers, millers, soldiers. Very good. Here's another one for you, Susie. Mm -hmm. Letter, hammer, teacup, snow shovel. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Try this one. Stars, pillows, milk bottles. Stars, pillows, 
milk bottle and stapler. Okay. Classroom observation is not diagnosis, but observant teachers have helped to identify those children whose problems need a thorough diagnostic study. They were from the wake of... Look at that word. This is Blake Carner. In the fourth grade, he was still reading at first grade level, and he was beginning to fall behind in all his subjects. Every teacher had offered an explanation. One teacher said, oh, Blake will outgrow this. Another said, this is just a general mental retardation. And still another felt that Blake had an emotional block to learning. What Blake really needed was a comprehensive diagnostic study, a process involving professionals from various fields. Once more, one, Two, Blake's three, evaluation four. began with a complete One, physical checkup. Two, three, when impairments of vision, hearing, One, and other two, health problems three, were ruled out, four. he was given a neurological examination. Dr. Elena Boder specializes in pediatric neurology. Put your finger on your nose, now on my finger. Nose, finger, nose, finger, nose, finger, nose, finger, nose, finger. Nose, finger, very good. Put your right hand on your left ear. Go ahead, uh, all right, put it down. Now your right hand on your right ear. Go ahead. The right hand on the right ear. Fine. Look through the lens of this otoscope with one eye and look at one of your fingers and see if you can see your fingerprints. Left hand, but right eye. An indication of mixed dominance. This, this test this reveals an immature speech pattern. There are pictures on the wall. I like to gather seashells on the seashore. I like to gather shores, seashells on the seashore. Very good. Let's try these. Dr. Boder checks reading not to determine grade level, but to evaluate the kinds of errors a child makes. Blake often transposes letters or sees them upside down, reads some words from right to left. These mistakes are often made by younger children just beginning to read, but at Blake's age, they suggest a neurological disorder. And uh, we marked it right over there. At another stage in the diagnostic study, Blake is examined by a psychologist, Dr. Helmut Versten. Right there. You want to mark where it is? As part of his study, Dr. Versten watches for signs of emotional disturbance. Though Blake occasionally shows some anxiety and frustration, any emotional problems appear to be the result of his failure at school and not the cause of his learning difficulty. Can you tell me what's missing on this one? The bristles. Right. I'll turn it for you, this one. Uh, the leg. Right. Can you turn it yourself? Dr. Burston also found Blake to be of bright, normal intelligence. Which is the hardest part? But his difficulties in some perceptual and language tests supported the findings of the neurological examination. I don't know. Do carpenters kneel? Yeah. Do microscopes magnify? No. Do syringes meditate? I don't know. Do canisters illuminate? I don't know. Sandpaper is rough. Glass is... Sharp. Three is an odd number. Six is... An even number. Mm -hmm. An ocean is deep. A pond is... Short. Short? Helping parents to understand the problem is an essential part of helping the child. Dr. Boder explains the test findings to Blake's mother. Now, in summary, Blake presents a variety of seemingly unrelated symptoms such as mixed dominance, 
He's left-handed and right-eyed and right-footed. He's also ambidextrous in that he sometimes uses his right hand instead of his left. He has some infantile speech articulation problems, which is characteristic of a speech of a much younger child. In the classroom, his attention span is, tends to be short, and he tends to be a little hyperactive, also like a behavior of a much younger child. So what is it that we're dealing with here? Actually, on closer analysis, all these symptoms and manifestations fall into a very distinct pattern of developmental or maturational lag, which leads us to making the diagnosis of minimal cerebral dysfunction with some specific language delay. And in addition to that, the screening for a reading disability problem showed that he indeed has a reading disability problem to which we refer medically as specific developmental dyslexia. In other words, it is not just a reading retardation that can improve with more practice, but it is a reading disability problem for which remedial reading techniques are imperative. In addition, he when parents understand the child's disabilities, there are many things they can do to help. Dr. Bowder stresses the importance of regular routines and good health habits. And by reassuring Blake, his parents can help him avoid emotional problems. But diagnosis and reassurance do not go far enough. It is now up to the school. Blake's test results are studied by the admissions committee, including the school principal, a psychologist, a pediatrician, a school nurse, and a teacher of special education. The committee then considers the alternatives. Since Blake's neurological dysfunction is relatively mild and he does not present a behavior problem in class, it is suggested that he might remain in the regular program and receive help from a tutor. But Blake is already far behind and has become anxious and fearful of making mistakes. Tutoring will not be enough. The committee decided in favor of a full-time program, a special class for the educationally handicapped. The school is Rancho Vista in Palos Verdes, California. Its class for the educationally handicapped was one of the first in California public schools. Blake's new teacher is Jerry Gibson. He already knows something about Blake. For Blake, the importance of such a class is not simply that he will be given easier work or more individual attention. He will learn in a new way. There are just 11 children in the special class. Blake will have his own assignments. He will work in whatever way he learns best, alone, with a partner, or in a group. Part of the time, he will have the teacher all to himself. OK, Blake, we're going to look at some words. N-U-M, B-E-R, number. OK, do it once more, and I want you to do it, OK? Tap out the rhythm of the word. N-U-M-B-E-R, number. Now you do it, using this hand. M-U... How does it start? No. N-U-M-B-E-R, number. Okay, once again. N-U-M... There's more than one way to teach the spelling of a word. If Blake has trouble with visual configurations, he may learn the rhythm of a word and the sound of letters. N-U-M-B-E-R. Now, I want you to trace the letters and tell me the letters as you trace. OK, Blake? Mm -hmm. Good. N. He traces the letters on a rough surface. U. And the word takes shape through his tactile and kinesthetic senses. B. As the teacher 
I have to find the best working pattern for each child. And the pattern we develop is based as much on the child's emotional needs as it is on his academic problems. In this class, children may choose where they will work. Some prefer a private office arrangement. These children have a lower frustration level. They are more easily distracted from their work. They are often upset by competition. And they need more reassurance than most children. It's very important to help them feel successful. And of course, when a child does begin to experience success in school, we often see a remarkable improvement in behavior. And go the rest of the way. Gail is a good illustration of this. In the beginning, she was sure she was a failure. She would even cross out the correct answers and make a wild guess. If she made a mistake, she would burst into tears. For a while, I gave her only the words I knew she couldn't miss. But she has made real progress. Now, of course, it's just as important for her to have some challenges. That's right. What did he do with the pony's nose? Put it in the water. What was the other word that means put? One we had a little trouble with. It means put. I can say, I, I put the card here. Another way of saying it is placed. I put good placed. Will you find the word placed in that paragraph for me? Spell it. P L A C E D. This class allows the child to get up, move around if he needs to, or go to another assignment for a while. These children are in this class because they need special considerations. You take a child who is extremely distractible and hyperactive. Five minutes may be the absolute limit he can stand to concentrate. On a bad day, it might be less than that. You put him in a regular class and ask him to do arithmetic for 20 minutes, and he's likely to blow. But it's important for the child to realize that giving him greater latitude doesn't mean that we remove responsibility. We have to help him learn that his special problems should not become an excuse for not trying. It really means he must try harder. We just try to keep the goals realistic. If he can only work five minutes, we don't ask him to work ten. But we ask him to make the best five-minute effort he possibly can. In the first row of circles, color the third circle green. The teacher increases periods of concentration by easy stages. The boys must pay attention to keep up with the teacher's instructions, and they are not allowed to go back. But the tape recorder is a help, too. The earphones shut out other sounds, and beating the machine becomes a game. One half red. In the second row, in the second row, find the fourth circle. Color the top half of the fourth circle blue. Tim, look at me. Make this sound. Now look at me. OK, what letter makes that sound? OK. Because this class makes heavy demands on the teacher, the school provides an assistant. While Mr. Gibson devotes time to a special problem, the assistant helps maintain routine. Fourth number. Now what did you hear? Yes. All right, four times zero is? Zero. Yeah. All right, and the rest you can do. Good. Look at this design very carefully. Now, when I take the design down, you are to make the same design on your paper. Many children in special classes like this will eventually go back to a regular school program. Out of 11, four are already spending a part of the day in other classes. Learning to work with a regular group is part of their training here. Group work is very hard for some children. They're under more pressures, 
there are more distractions, and they are more conscious of their own mistakes. I don't put a child in the group until he and I both feel he is ready. But once he's in, the rules are strict. When he joins the group, he agrees to follow along. Okay, let's see how we did. Don't, uh, don't change. Don't make any changes. No one is perfect on these. The thing you are to do is to look carefully at these. John Boyle hates to make an error. Don't worry about it. Not and if he is having trouble, he may refuse to work at all or he takes out his frustrations by disrupting the group. This time, you were to draw what you see plus the missing parts. There are two figures. Okay, look carefully. So. John, why don't you take out a, a new sheet of paper? Try with a new sheet of paper. John. John. John, look at me, please. John. No one is perfect on making these. That's why we're doing these. It's practice. So I don't want you to worry about it, OK? Would you try once more? Would you try another sheet of paper? Okay, you have plenty of time. OK, don't worry about it. Plenty of time. Try again. OK? Ready? Yeah. All right, look carefully at this design. Got it? Okay, make that design. John, John, if you can't work with us, you will have to leave the group. John, I said you would have to leave the group you can't work with us. What you are doing is disturbing to me and is disturbing to the rest of the children in the group. Will you pick up your pencil? John, pick up your pencil. I'm sorry, you'll have to leave the group. John. You'll have to leave the group if you can't work with us. This is not helping anyone, least of all you. Let's go. You sit down here. Okay? Put your hand down. Yeah, you stay right there. And I John has come a long way. A year ago, whenever he was upset, he'd run out of the classroom, and I'd have to go find him. Almost every day there was a problem, but mm -hmm. talking about it helps. Then you weren't upset with me. You weren't upset with any of the other boys. No. What were you upset with? Me. With you, because you made a mistake. Mm-hmm. Oh, listen. Now look, let me tell you something, mm -hmm. okay? Do you think I expected you to be able to do that work? No, no. No? Well, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Listen. If I thought that you could do that work perfectly, then why should I have you there doing it? To help me, I guess. I don't know. To help you. But if you didn't need this work, if you did not make mistakes, then I wouldn't have you doing it. I expect you to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, John. We all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Remember the time I sent a um, paper home, one of your papers home with you, and I'd marked the problem wrong, mm -hmm. and it was right? Mm -hmm. I make mistakes. 
Mm -hmm. Remember the time I sent the paper home, and I'd written a word on uh, in the note to you on this paper, and I'd misspelled a word. Mm -hmm. I make mistakes. We all do. Mm -hmm. The thing and the reason for this assignment, John, was to help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you make mistakes, what are you going to do? Go try to do it over. You try to do it over, or if we're doing something as we were doing on the board, you're going to try to. Okay. Make a mistake. Forget it. Okay. Yeah. Just keep going. Okay. You want to try that? Okay. So friends. Mhm. Mm okay. Let's work on that. Teaching children like John is a cooperative effort that involves the parents as well as the school. Without this cooperation, what is accomplished in the classroom can be undone at home. Jerry Gibson believes that winning the parents' support is an important part of his teaching job. You know, so many parent-teacher conferences can really be pretty horrible. The teacher usually calls the parents in because their child has done something wrong. But Mr. Gibson calls or comes by sometimes just to tell us when John has done something well. This is so important to parents of educationally handicapped children. There are times when you just about give up hope of course, no teacher is magic. He can't just make the problems disappear. But talking about them like this keeps them from becoming a crisis. It's been good for John to be a part of this, too. He gets to tell his side, and I think that talking about his own behavior seems to be a big step toward coping with it and learning self-control. John's self-confidence and his emotional control have improved remarkably. Looking back a few years, I realize he's a different boy now. Like John Boyle, many children enrolled in special classes will gradually move back to regular school. Forget they ever had a learning problem. Other children whose disabilities are more severe may always be limited. But public schools can help them all. And in these special programs, there is no single measure of success. This is my son, Carrie. Like the other children in this film, he is educationally handicapped. In his case, the impairment is more severe. Carrie isn't able to attend regular classes. Before the special program, he was excluded from public school altogether. Fortunately, now there is a class for Carrie. Of course, his teacher helps him with his problems, but he does something else that's very important, too. He looks for the things that Carrie does well. This is one of Carrie's first paintings, done when he was eight. You can see the perceptual distortions and uncontrolled markings. The visual distortion will probably always be there. But in his later work, you can see the growing control and self-confidence. This one is Noah sending out the dove. Of course, not all children are especially talented or gifted, but every child can do some things successfully. 
and he has the right to discover what he can do best.